and stay wisdom where we go over tips, tricks, and information on saxophone repair. Today is also the first day of sax temper. First day. We are super excited to be sharing that with you. In sax temper, we're going to be releasing a new production model or a new Uber Hall yep. vintage saxophone every week or each day. Uh, not it. Let me just start over. Each week. Each good. week will be a new saxophone or a new vintage overhaul saxophone that we're going to release for sale. We're also going to have a drawing and I'm going to tell you how to get into that so you can win a set of custom key risers. Uh, that's all going to be happening. So if you want to get in on the instruments that are coming out, sign up for our newsletter at musicmedic.com mm -hmm. and we'll send you an email and you can see uh, what's going on with the different instruments. Um, and today we released our Wilmington bass saxophone. Yeah. So that's been highly anticipated. We did a lot of work on that. We're excited about that. Um, our good friend Benny Hill is going to be coming this Friday, mm -hmm. and he's going to be playing different instruments for us each Friday of this month mm -hmm. of September. Yep. And that's when we're going to give our, uh, our prize away, and I'll show you how to do that a little more. Um, basically, how to do that is if you see this video, if you see it live, or if you see it uh, after it's been live, lived, after we broadcast or however you're supposed to say it, uh, just take the hashtag Saxtember and put it in the comments. Uh, you don't need to do anything other than that and just make sure that we know your name. Um, and we're going to have a drawing on Friday and we will go ahead and give uh, a set of our Music Medic uh, custom sax key risers away each Friday this week. So use sure. sax temper in the comments and we'll enter you in the drawing. Very, very cool. Friday. We are also going to be doing a couple of day courses this month. We're going to be mm -hmm. doing one on soldering. So for you amateur repair techs, we're going to have a day, day long soldering course where we go over all of the uh, supplies, all of the tools, all of the setup, how to do all of the cleaning and preparation, as well as soldering techniques for soft soldering and hard soldering which is something that we do a lot of here at Music Medic. We do a lot of key fabrication and hard soldering is something that is a little more elusive in the repair community. And we do a lot of work on that here. So we're going to share you all of that. It's, uh, a, it's a good hot topic. That it's, we it's a very hot topic. Sizzling. Sizzling hot. Sizzling topic. Um, and then also on the 24th of September, if you are getting into flute repair, we're going to have a whole day of flute padding. Um, and it's going to go over open hole and closed hole flute padding. So both of those yep. courses are on the education page at musicmedic.com. So check those out. You can sign up for those courses and uh, get all of that good information. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. So Leroy, this is also back to school time. It sure is. So we wanted to give you guys some tips and tricks on uh, polishing and cleaning your instrument. Why don't we go over uh, swabbing your instrument? We'll talk about polishing silver instruments sure. mm -hmm. and maybe how to deal with some sticky pads and a couple other things. And then I'll review how to get uh, get back into the drawing because that's going to be really cool. So, Leroy, why do we yeah. even why would we even swab out an instrument? Why would not just put it back in the case? It's a good question, and it's a it's a really simple answer. The the basic thing is when you play an instrument, whether it be saxophone, flute, clarinet. Um, all that moisture and warm air gets blown throughout the horn and it sticks to the inside of the bore, which is the inside of the instrument. And if you just leave it there, throw it in the case and whatever, all that dirt, funk, spit, whatever dries up. And then kind of just imagine that process, two, three weeks, months. Ugh. It exactly that's exactly <laughs> the response that needs to happen and it is it's it is gross so it's really important to swab it out each time to help prevent the funk the spit and all the other stuff that can build up on the inside of that and in the and actually in the long run too that actually helps you and saves you money as far as repair costs too because when you keep the instrument clean inside it helps stuff not collect on the inside of the pads and on the pads too okay cool so let's show them how to swab out a saxophone cool so we got, so for the swab, we got this one right here. It does have a little bit of stuff on it. So when I say funk, that's the, funk. that's, that's a small amount. So that's actually not too bad, but it does remove dirt and stuff on the inside. So, but this is great. The shape is perfect because it actually hugs the inside of the bore of the instrument. So it gets the maximum amount of funk and um, spit from the inside. It is a microfiber cloth. It's got a nice long string with a weight on the end that is covered, which is an awesome feature because this helps prevent scratching the inside of the instrument. True. That could actually damage the bore and, 
and stuff over time. So this is a really good thing to have when you're looking at a swap. So what you would do is just get the saxophone. Okay. Start with the, always think of starting with the bigger end first. Okay. So you're going to want to insert the weight into the bell and just kind of get as much of that in there as you can. All right. And then tilt it on its back and then basically give it a little shake. And then as you can see, I'm going to go this way. There you go. There oh, we there go. The see, it came right out where the neck goes. So here, all you got to do is just pull it through and that's it. You are done. You have swabbed out your instrument. And if I wasn't talking and just did it, it probably would have taken me maybe 10 seconds. All right, cool. Let's, well, in, the, in that, uh, to be expedient, let's also talk about how to do the neck. So saxophonists, they do, they have a body swab, but they also have a neck swab. So yes. let's show them the neck swab. Well, the neck swab is this one. And you can see the shape is slightly different. And for all you donut foodies like me, just think of a maple bar, because that's about what this is. <laughs> okay. Um, it obviously has a lot shorter string on it because the neck is a lot shorter than the saxophone itself. And the weight is also covered to help prevent scratching the inside. So you just take your neck. Again, same principle. Enter in the big side, not the small side. So you take that weight, drop it on in, let it fall through, and just pull it on through, and then you're done. Cool. And if you guys are watching this, whether you're watching it live or you're watching it in this week, uh, take that hashtag SaxTember and put it down in the comments below and you can be entered in to win a custom set of key risers from musicmedic.com. We're going to have the drawing this Friday, uh, September 3rd. Third. And those risers are super sweet too. Cool. Let's, uh, let's go on to the clarinet swab. Let's do that. Okay. So this is a clarinet swab. This is a very cool one because it actually is double-sided. So each... So you oh, basically have the string yep. the, with the covered weight again, Okay. the swab itself. And actually, I'll open that up so you can see it. So, so we've got bloop. like a silk square there. Got a silk square. Very and nice. then string on the other side. Okay. And so you've got weights on both ends of that. You've got weights on both ends. Cool. And um, we'll tell you why in just a second. But same principle. So this particular one, the, the string is designed so you would uh, clean and swab the horn in sections. So basically you would uh, take it apart in the center, clean the bottom part. Again, go into the biggest part first, which would be the bell. Just drop the weight in there and then pull it through. The key to this is for the second weight to not pull it through super fast because it'll hit the body and do weird things. So just pull it slow and then pull it slow on through and then you're good. And then you would basically do the same exact thing for the upper joint. Just drop it on, just drop it through there. The weight will drop there and then pull it on through. And then it'll just help guide that on through and you are good to go. Awesome. Let's go on to flute. Flute's a little different now. I, now yeah. that, that next, uh, not the next strap, that swap this that swap. you have right there, that can be used on flute, correct? Yes, this can. Okay. Um, and again, mainly not not just because it's got two sides on it, but because of the of the material that this is, the silk will compress a lot, um, unlike the, any microfiber or uh, cloth swabs. The it still gets the it still gets the spit and the other stuff out really well. It's just this compresses a lot more than that, so the inside of the flute is smaller than the saxophone for sure and about the same size maybe a little smaller than clarinet but you can still use this because it compresses cool all right so let's move on to the flute cleaning cloth this is something that a lot of players have in their cases and yeah. how do they use that thing so this is a this is a flute cleaning rod it's if, if this looks familiar if you guys do any sewing you don't have to admit it if you don't want to um that's not <laughs> wrong with sewing <laughs> i never <laughs> said there was all right, all right. Um, but yeah, no, it's a, a it basically it's it's like, like a an big needle. Yep, exactly. So this is like this is like an eyelet of a needle. So um, we also we also carry these cool little microfiber cloths just for wiping either lacquer or nickel keys or anything like that. Um, you can take something like that and then cut a strip like this cool. of it, okay. or you can get like an old T-shirt, a little rag, uh, something that something preferably that's lint free. So all you do is just kind of just push that through there. I like I like to wrap it around the rod itself. It helps protect the rod so it doesn't hit the inside of the instrument. I usually like to also do it in separate pieces. 
So take the instrument apart. You can start with the foot joint. Again, this is really easy. You just kind of push it in and pull it out. Okay. Same thing with the body. The body, you have to kind of go on both sides unless you want to push it through. I highly recommend not to doing that just for ease of cleaning it. Just making sure you don't crush any of the keys and stuff while you're doing it. So you're push just, it in. You're just kind of holding it uh, in the palm of your hand with the keys up. Yep. I'm just basically cradling it so I'm not cramming down the keys. Okay. And then same thing. Just push it in and pull it out. And then when it comes to the head joint, again, you want to clean it out, but there is a head cork in this part right here. And that's basically just pressed fit in there. So when you push this in here, again, it's not a problem, but don't cram this in so hard that it actually pushes this out because it can. So I would just push it in slowly until it bumps up against the, the top of the head cork area. Just give it a little spin so it has a nice little swipe and then pull it right back out. And then Leroy, what happens if, uh, I think this is an important question to ask, yeah. what happens if they get uh, a, one of these swabs stuck. Mm, that's a great instrument. question. Absolutely good question. Um, whatever you do, do not try to like cram it, pull it, whatever with a lot of force because you can end up bending keys, damaging the instrument um, and doing a lot of other hurtful things to either maybe yourself and the horn. So I usually recommend just kind of like step away take it into a qualified repair technician. They have all the tools and the knowledge to help okay. you out with that kind of stuff. Cool, let's talk about end caps uh, mm, and the yeah. importance of those for saxophones. Yes, this is a really good one. So we're gonna go here. So this area is super important on saxophone. There's a couple that are really important, but this is, I'll say, probably the first area of contact that's important. So as you can see, this little key sticks up past where the neck comes in. So this is important. So here's the neck, put this on there. This is important. So it actually makes contact with the octave key on the neck. So I'm going to push the octave key and it makes that key go up and down. If this gets bent one way or the other, that will, it'll probably make either that not work properly or at all. And a lot of times what ends up happening is when you put this in a case and you don't have an end plug, it bends this, distorts it, and then you have to go visit your repair technician. This is a super easy, I'll say fix or preventative measure to help prevent that. So all you do is right there in the tenon socket, you take this end plug and you just push it in there and it basically gives protection for this area to not have things go around it and hit it and pull it so it stays in adjustment. Cool, and those are available on musicmedic.com. I think we Absolutely. also, if you look them up on Amazon, we sell them there too. There's an excellent cap uh, made by Key Leaves, and oh, that has got, cool. it's vented and it also has a little adjustable screw at the mm -hmm. very top. So if there's a little bit of a gap between say your end cap and the case, you can adjust that to fill that space and it will keep the instrument from moving around. So that's the gap cap from Key Leaves. Uh, Rulon is the owner and creator of that, Rulon Brown, and we're really happy to have those available at Music Medic yep. too. I forgot to bring it for the video, but uh, go out and get one of those too. Those are really cool, especially Very if you're like cool. a, a pro player with like a vintage case or something. Oh, yeah. uh, they're excellent for that. Okay, so those are end caps. Now let's move on to if you have, say, a silver plated instrument. Yeah. Uh, I want to show them how to polish. Uh, there's a lot of polishing things mm -hmm. that you can do, but there's a polishing cloth, a silver polishing cloth, and it has a couple of features to it. I want to show everybody so they can do this at home. And who knows, you might be a technician, you might not have seen this before. So how do they use a, a silver polishing cloth? Cool. So whenever you get a silver polishing cloth, uh, the one this is the one we carry here is the connoisseurs. Um, but the principle behind the polishing cloth is the same, no matter what brand it is. There's two sides to this cloth. So this is the... This particular one for the connoisseurs on the brand side is, I'll say is the polishing part. The back side is the actual cloth that's treated that actually helps you remove tarnish. That, so not to get confused with the polishing part. So this is a cleaning, tarnishing, removing part. This, I'll say just soft cloth is the polishing cloth. So what you would wanna do, so if you can see it kinda there, right on the head joint see that little dark gray area that's some tarnish so to remove that i would take the treated side take that area just kind of in a circular motion and that's treated with like a silver polishing compound basically. correct okay. yep 
and I just rubbed it just a little bit. And as you can see, it, it's super shiny now and that tarnish is gone. Now to finish off the process, I would just turn it over to the polishing side and then just kind of do one last little step and it kind of blends everything together and it removes any of the, um, the tarnishing removing part of the other cloth. Cool. And then it's nice and shiny and ready to go. Nice. So that's how you use a silver polishing cloth. Let's also talk about the tarny strips. So you yeah. have your polishing cloth, you've taken away any sort of tarnish, and then you have these little strips that you can put in their case. Make sure that when you get a tarny strip, they usually have a little space to write the date on there. Take a Sharpie and actually write the date date on there. Yep. I've put these in my case a bunch of times and then a year later forgot to replace them. You should replace them every three months. So put the date on your tarny strips and they're, you know, they're like 25, 50 cents a piece. They work great, especially when you change them regularly. Mm -hmm. All right. So the next thing we want to go is uh, go with is show them. Well, hey, if you are watching oh. this video and you are watching it sometime this week, take the hashtag Saxtember, put it in the comments for the video. We will enter your name into a drawing for a set of custom uh, key risers. So it takes Saxtember, uh, use it in social media, use it in the comments for this video, and we'll enter your name in and so you can win the prize this Friday. And because all the cool kids are doing it. Uh, I mean, I mean, we're doing it. <laughs> just all right, just so saying. Let's, uh, let's also move on to sticky pads. Oh, so yes. sticky pads is a problem and a music medic, we invented a type of pad that doesn't stick the root pads, but, um, we didn't invent them. They were invented long ago, but we made <laughs> them popular in the end of the 20th century and into the 21st century. That's how old we are. Uh, oh, man. Take, if you have a problem of sticky pads, say you have a concert coming up and you have a, you know, a key passage and you have a pad that's sticking, you, we have a good temporary solution for that. That's called Pad Magic. Pad Magic is a little kit that we sell. It comes with a little uh, couple of applicators that are shaped like teardrops and a little package of uh, this kind of Teflon-based powder that doesn't do anything to the pads except make them slippery. Uh, basically, to put this stuff on is you take the brown uh, applicator or piece of cloth and you put it in between the tone hole and the pad that's sticking. And you just place that on top of the tone hole and then put the push the pad cup down fairly firmly. It doesn't have to be super firm, just enough so that you can pull the cleaning cloth out and That'll take care of any gunk that's on the pad. Then the next part is to take some of the pad powder, um, and we've kind of already done that once before, but you take the pad powder out, spread it on the cleaning portion, and then you kind of just rub it into the cloth. And the, the applicators are shaped like a teardrop because one side is for the big pads and the other side is for the smaller pads on the saxophone. And so, you're just going to do the same procedure. You're going to take the cloth and put it between the pad and the tone hole. Make sure the powder is up against the pad. So powder side up and press the pad cup onto the pad or press the pad cup onto the cloth and then pull it out again. That's going to get the powder on the pad and it'll keep the pad itself from sticking. This will last for probably about a week. I think that's about the most I've ever had it you know, stay not sticky for. So it'll get you through your gig, it'll get you through your concert or performance or whatever you whatever you have to do that you might be a little nervous about. Um, it's a nice confidence builder and it also gives you a little bit of time to then go to your repair technician yep. and have the pad replaced or the instrument cleaned, whatever you need to do. Um, the final tip that we're gonna do or show you is just about neck straps. If you are a player, saxophonists, uh, they all have different kinds of neck straps. Um, make sure that you have a neck strap that has a working clasp. So Leroy's showing you one that has a working clasp. If that little part that's sliding back and forth, if that's missing, get yourself a new clasp, guys. These uh, student straps that we have at Music Medic, they're just a couple of bucks and they have the clasp that will hold the neck strap onto the instrument keeps the instrument from falling off and having you uh, have to take it to your repair technician. Um, so that's a cheapy student strap. They're fine. I use them on gigs, especially if I don't want to 
You know, if I have a new shirt or something, I want oh, to yeah. use my sweaty old strap. Or you can get a nice one like this. this is the Sebula strap with an extra wide adjuster. It has pads, leather. It's made of fine grade leather. It has a nice clasp on it. This is a plastic hook. Um, some of these come with a metal hook. So if you have that, you can get some hot glue shrink tubing. We sell this on the site at musicmedic.com. It's hot glue filled shrink tubing. Take a little piece of that, spread it around the clasp, and then you can heat it up and it'll glue itself and keep it from uh, damaging the body of your instrument. So guys, to get involved with sax timbre and get into the drawing, just follow the, uh, or just copy that sax timbre and put that down in the comments below. We're gonna just keep an eye on social media and on this channel, and you will be entered into a drawing, and we will announce the winner in our Friday videos, so make sure you comment and share this before Friday. We'll have one winner per week, and you'll get a set of custom key risers. You can check those out at musicmedic.com. Next week, we're gonna be going over uh, sax repairs done wrong, so if you had some uh, different types of uh, tips and tricks that you maybe have not worked out over the you know over the years we're going to show you some example of those and we also have courses coming up Ooh, and yeah. don't forget to enter in the drawing every week this week of sax timber we're going to be showing a different uh, saxophone that we're coming out with here at music medic and we're also going to be giving away uh, cool stuff mm -hmm. so until next time guys that's going to do it for us for now um, happy sax timber